what I'm what I'm riffing on is the idea this this failed idea, this 20th century blue, uh, very blue pill idea that you ought to have a commitment to commitment. I hate it when uh, I also part of that chapter, but I hate it when I hear women call men committophobes. The fuck is a committophobe, right? You're afraid of commitment. I'm going to point this out to you right now, ladies. If you think that men are afraid of commitment, all I got to do is point out the fact that men commit to businesses. They commit to education. They commit to the military. They commit to their families. They commit to like, think of all the things that men have to make a commitment to. And then think about all the things that you have to make a commitment to and how easy it is for you to get out of those commitments and how easy or how hard and difficult it is for men to get out of those commitments. Commitments are commitments. Commitment doesn't, isn't, defined by committed to you in a rela- in a romantic relationship commitment means a lot of other things man so are you committed to commitment or are you committed to your own purpose in fact there that's a law of power by the way don't commit to anyone well how can you do that role you have to commit to somebody blah blah, blah. otherwise you seem like wishy-washy and, and and you don't nobody can trust you because you're not commit commitment worthy Commit to no one but your own cause. That's Robert Greene from 48 Laws of Power. It's not that you shouldn't commit to things. It's just understanding that the things that you do commit to should in some way benefit you. Now, what happens when you think that's the case and then it doesn't? Who should you, should you, should Will Smith, should we have respect for Will Smith for sticking it out? Do we think more of him or less of him for having stuck it out and having nothing but nice things to say? And by the way, Jada Pinkett Smith in her, according to the interviews anyways, in her book, she is just nasty as a freaking snake in the grass with, with uh, Will. But Will says nothing but nice things about her. He's in love. He loves her to death. Joy of the world. So do we have more respect for Will Smith because of that? Because he stuck it out? Or do we go, fuck, I'm glad that's not me. <laughs> I think it's the opposite. What, what makes a man respectable? That's a, that's why I always talk about like the difference between respect between men and women. There's another gender difference, right? A separate standard of justice, separate standard of respect for women. Respect is implied just because they have a magic cooter, you know, respect women. Well, what do they do? That's respectable. That, what do they do that respectable? That's the male way of looking at respect. For women, it is everyone is deserving of respect. You get some and you get some and you everybody gets respect, right? It's just, it's common courtesy, right? Because women look at respect in the same way that they look at politics and organizing society. Everyone is deserving of respect. Everybody gets a trophy for participating. No, men have first place, second place, and third place and, and last place and no place because we're hierarchical. First place, second place, third place. You did the best. You did the second best. You did the third best. And you guys need to try harder. That's how it works. Respect. What have you done that makes you respectable? And any man will, any man worth their salt, any man who's not a pussy, any man who's not been trained by the gynocentric social order, and even the guys who have, will to some degree are into the competition with other guys. That's the intrasexual competition part. And that's what I'm going to get into here in just a minute. It's intra-sexual competition. And the way men do it is, again, like I said, through combat, but we also do it through hierarchies. Who merits what? And really, when you think about how men measure themselves against other men, it's always based hierarchically, right? There's the, je- there's the what, the colonel, the general, the lieutenant, and uh, down to the sergeant, down to the pri- corporal, private, blah, 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 chain of command, the CEO, the CFO, the COO. The janitor, like down at the bottom of the bottom of the heap. Who's more respectable, the janitor or the CEO? You could say, well, the janitor, because he goes, he's committed to his job. He sticks it out, man. He doesn't, he'd been there for 50, he's been there for 50 years and now he's dead, but he stuck it out and he was committed to his job. You got more respect for that guy, Michael Knowles? Or do you have more respect for the guy who has a bigger, greater body of work, has done more for, has left the den in the universe and has done his own thing as a result of actually watching out for himself first and then helping other other people, maybe being a benefit to society? Which one do you have more respect for, Michael Knowles? I'll wait (laughs) for an answer that's never coming. 